everyone, welcome back to the Broom Closet. This is the second installment of the Owens Origin Stories from Practical Magic. It is a take on the beloved favorite Practical Magic through the Sims universe. Last we left Maria, she had just had her daughter Stella, and you are in for a treat. Melding the timelines together on this was a little tricky, so if you'd like to come along with me, we are going to see Stella grow up in the iconic Owen's house. We're going to see her fall in love and we are going to see what happens after. These characters definitely took some interesting turns. You are going to see Stella become the mother of our Aunt Franny, Aunt Jet, and new to the story, Uncle Vincent. So stay put for that. In our intro here, we are going to see John Hathorn, the father of Stella, coming to meet Maria. In the end, he gives her the money to eventually get out of his life take his daughter and just disappear. And this is what leads us to our beloved Owens house on Magnolia Street. I tried to include the layers of the house from the basement, first floor, second floor, and top floor. I worked really hard on this. I loved what happened with the original layout, but I changed it and made it more authentic. I moved rooms around, but I know you're not here for the architectural business. You're here to see what happens with Stella and Maria. Maria just fell naturally into this environment. So we're going to see Maria get really comfortable in her own home right away. She just fits right in in her greenhouse, uh, her bedroom. She actually uses Sally's room as her room. I was really able to deck out the attic and I was so happy that we got the modular adjustable stairs because I was able to do the sweeping staircase, but you can see the exposed beams, there's beds up there, that's where little Stella plays, and we're going to see Stella just getting used to the her surroundings and learning to walk and learning to talk and experiencing the um, the Sabbaths. They do Ostara, they do the summer solstice, but she's very mischievous. She's a very independent, strong-headed little girl. And it's about this time we're going to see Stella transition from the toddler mode into kid mode. She's going to start going to school and having homework, but we are going to see her little birthday party uh, and the young lady she turns into. Now, as I continued with this character and she started going through her adolescent phase and she was going through school, she was very mischievous, but she was also very responsible and smart and witty. And it reminded me of the character in Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood, Vivi, who uh, is the mother, Ashley Judd's character. She's poised and self-confident and uh, very alluring and charming, but she's also uh, into pushing the boundaries a little bit. So I like that about her character. Maria and Stella do have a very kind, loving, nurturing relationship. Maria is trying to be the best mother she can, but she's doing it on her own. And in that aspect, uh, Stella may have become a little spoiled with getting away with a lot of her mischievous tricks. Stella's attitude has always been in good fun though. And as she turns from kid into teenager, um, she starts to maybe rub people the wrong way a little bit with how forthcoming she is and how decisive and bold she can be so she definitely had a few enemies here and there and with her mischievous uh, pattern it definitely elevated that so here we see another birthday and she is growing up yet again i tried to make the clothing timeline neutral because it's kind of hard to meld both worlds together but we will start seeing the 40s 50s transition here shortly but she stayed a good student she uh did her work and she eventually in a kind of cute meet situation met this young man this is james mccoy i tried to give him like the coolest name i could think of but they meet and they fall in love right off the bat she's a teenager at this time and in my mind it's um it's in the mid 30s world war ii hasn't happened yet James is a handyman um, and he builds things and he loves fishing so he takes her to the ocean and uh, their first kiss is on the lighthouse and eventually he will be joining the service because it's that time in our nation's history. But before that these two really had a good time. The quintessential turn your stomach cute stuff that they enjoy doing together. Um, he has a dog. The dog's name's Diggity. James McCoy in the game is in the young adult stage and Stella unfortunately is still a teenager so back then it wasn't that unheard of. I'm thinking she's like 16, 
17 and young adult in the game I'm thinking is like 20 to 21 years old uh, so it wasn't that strange and especially for that time the problem was he wasn't able to propose to her as a teenager so she had to age up into the young adult stage which pushed her out of school and um, kind of vaulted her into the next stage of her life so she does get her good man if only for a short time i am pretty sure you will be able to guess what his timeline is going to be as far as the war is concerned and where their lives are going to head after franny jet and vincent are born and i also wanted to include this really cute little shot of her making a snow angel in my mind she's still a kid she's still very innocent she still has this first love glow about her this is the first guy she falls in love with and that is who she is going to marry so this is the shout it from the rooftops joy she's feeling so their engagement is not very long as you can see there is still snow on the ground and actually this is ostara and they decide to get married right away i don't know why she wore red to the wedding but that is really cool to me as you can see maria is in her old school outfit but the fact that she wore red is so, so classy. Because if you think back to, if you've read Rules of Magic, the mother in that book really has an aversion to red, red shoes specifically, but I thought the red in this was the uh, feminine power. So she is, she is holding her power. We're also gonna see her dad show up, which made things very awkward. Maria was not happy, and yes, they did end up getting into a fight, but everyone was very well behaved apart from the maid that keeps running back and forth in my shot. Again, something here that pertains to her innocence and how new this relationship is. She married the first guy she fell in love with, but we are going to see what happens. And what do you do after you get married? You buy a house, of course. This house is actually a real house. You can Google it. It's 164 Myrtle Street, Springfield, Massachusetts. And this was my grandmother's house growing up and I wanted to include it. I built it not thinking it was going to be in the game, but it provided a really cool layout for a very 1940s interior. So ladies and gentlemen, if you stuck around with me for this long, I applaud you. Thank you. You are about to be immersed into kind of a joint world. I really took themes uh, from the movie Blast from the Past with Brendan Fraser and from the Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood. I was trying to meld those two worlds so you're gonna see a lot of the homemaking, a lot of the male-female domestic roles, and this is very Norman Rockwell home aesthetic. Again, you're probably going to see a few items in the home that are a little too modern for that pre-war era before James goes to fight in the war, but I thought we would be spending uh, such a little time in the house that we would just make it um, the home that Jet, Franny, and Vincent grow up in. So in that timeline, you're going to see some crazy carpets and patterns and a lot of wood paneling. They are definitely the it couple on the block. Everybody knows them. They go, they hold house parties. Um, she is the good housewife. And there is actually a room upstairs adjoined to their bedroom that I created, which she keeps all of her magical items in. And so um, a part of her is trying to subdue that magical side of her life and just live the good housewife. Um, and James is very much the good host. He likes to mix drinks. Um, he has his man cave that you saw earlier, which is the door there. But they love to hold house parties and live that uh, suburban block party lifestyle. Here we can see their crazy living room. Their space is definitely set up for entertaining and not so much for kids just yet. But I think I was trying to capture and convey what we think of as the simpler time and the more wholesome time in our history. But it really had its own set of really big problems. But here right now we're in a safe little bubble. We're in this Reese Witherspoon's Pleasantville or the blast from the past with Christopher Walken, Truman Show, kind Kind of scenario here. Everyone, thank you for joining me on this little sub-story of Practical Magic of two characters we never met. I made them up. They never existed, but in my mind, this is how their lives progressed. So next time when you join me, we will be watching Aunt Frances, Aunt Jet, and Uncle Vincent grow up in the 1940s, 50s, and into the 60s. Everyone, thank you. Have a wonderful day.